you'll know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday. Warning. The following podcast might be too truthful for most liberals. Listener discretion is therefore advised. Welcome to the Tea Party Power Hour. My guest today is Mr. Kyle Mann of the Babylon Bee. You know him from his series of Babylon Bee Guides, the guides to being the guide to being a perfect Christian, the guide to wokeness. Today, Kyle is here to talk to us about his brand new book, The Babylon Bee Guide to Gender. Kyle, welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. I have been looking forward to this for I, I guess we booked this about a month ago, and I've really been looking forward to it because you know, everything today is just so serious, and this these are serious topics, but the bottom line is, is that, um, oh, how can I put this? Uh, I mean, after doing interview after interview about the, the stolen election and the persecution of Donald Trump and all these other things that are going wrong with society, every once in a while, you just kind of have to laugh at it as a release, I think. Is that part of the reason for writing the book? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think humor has a ton of different functions, you know, that God has God has given humor the, this power over these these kind of events. You know, it's um, it, you know, on the one hand, humor humor helps us get through this kind of stuff. You know, you have to laugh sometimes so that you don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of ways it's it really does kind of speak light to the darkness in a way. And and on a more serious uh, level, humor mocks bad ideas and exposes bad ideas for being ridiculous um you know like you said you've been doing all these serious interviews on um on these topics and it, uh, you know at, at some point it starts to either depress you or get you down or um on some level uh it just you you just start to get numb to it um you know you can only you can only be serious about it for so long before you're like yeah yeah i've heard that before but humor has a way of of uh, breaking through and helping us to see things in a new light that serious talk just really can't ever uh, ever achieve. Oh, I agree. In fact, I, I also agree with your point about you know some things need to be mocked. I mean, humor and even gossip help reinforce social norms and you know what our expectations are, and certainly malicious gossip isn't a good thing but in some ways gossip is a good thing mocking people is a good thing because it basically lets the world know what our society will and will not tolerate now a lot of the stuff in the book really rang true with me for instance you quote kevin sorbo and his test for gender which was basically uh you know reach down below your waist and if you have a male body part you're a male and you have if you have a female body part you're a female now that has been a tried and true test for me except on maybe really cold days and it's never failed me so i i personally think that that's the only test for gender there is but in this complicated world we live in as you point out in the book gender and sex apparently aren't the same thing could you explain to my listeners exactly what that means <laughs> yeah this is all this all goes back to gender theory that was invented very recently where they tried to separate gender and uh, biological sex. And that was the beginning of the dismantling of what we believe about biological reality. Um, you know, they, uh, because, because sex is so immediately obvious as, as expert Kevin Sorbo pointed out, um, you know, because you can so immediately determine sex and that's why doctors can do it in the womb. <laughs> and that's why doctors can do it as soon as a baby's born, because it's just immediately apparent. Um, in order to dismantle that kind of foundation of society and foundation of Western civilization, they have to say, well, um, yes, that's real and immutable, but there's this other thing that isn't uh, immutable and that's gender and they invent this whole 
all, all these complicated theories and it just leads you to some bizarre places which is which is the point of the book obviously we're mocking and exaggerating those claims but our book really is like if you just took gender theory to its logical conclusion then there's not much difference between the satire and exaggeration in our book and uh what liberals actually believe about gender like we make jokes you know in our book that, that you could be a you know you could be a, a cocaine bear sexual or uh, you, your gender could be you know mandalorian and <laughs> you know and you could say oh well, that's just a silly conservative joke but if you look at their worldview why not there's no once gender just becomes whatever you believe inside then you could be anything uh, actually uh I, when I was researching this book, um, when we were putting this this humor book together, I found that there was a guy at Google who gave a talk and said that he identified as a large, ornate building. And y- you compare that to the jokes in the book, and it's really not that far off. <laughs> no, it's really not. And it's also interesting <laughs> that it's not limited to, oh, uh, genders. For example, I read a story about a substitute teacher who was fired from a school district because she refused to recognize a little boy in one of her classes as a cat. And (laughs) the school district said, listen, in order to be able to teach in our school system, you have to be able to relate to the kids. That includes all the kids, including the kids who think they're cats. And she was basically fired because the kid wouldn't talk to a teacher unless the teacher meowed at him first and she wasn't going to contribute to the kid's mental illness. Although, in all fairness, I don't think it was mental illness. This is a kid who said, okay, these adults are buying into all this woke nonsense. Let's see how far I can push the envelope. Actually, probably a pretty smart kid who was, in his own way, mocking uh, this particular stuff. Now, one of the things that really let me know that we were in trouble is when I saw Judge Kentanji Brown Jackson, or actually future Judge Kentanji Brown Jackson, being asked by Marsha Blackburn to define what a woman is. And this was her response. I'll have you comment on it in just a second. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The of the word- She's not a biologist, so she can't comment on what a woman is. Your thoughts, Kyle? <laughs> I'm not a biologist, which is funny, you know, because it really is self-defeating because now she's admitting that man and woman is biological reality Ah. um just by pushing it off onto biologists obviously she got trapped in a little bit of a pretzel there trying to you know twist herself in knots to to defend uh, gender ideology and and, uh, pushed it off onto the biologist to figure out what it is (laughs) i'll tell you what my translation is she knew if she told the truth and actually defined what a woman is people on her own side of the political aisle would have eaten her alive So she has to maintain this idea that a woman and a man are such complicated concepts that unless you're a biologist, you just don't know. And, uh, you know, I know at one point in the book you said there were a million different genders, but I'm curious as to how many there are because I saw a young lady, college student, on one of the social media sites screaming that if you don't agree that there are over 600 genders, you're denying science. Now, I don't know about you, Kyle, but I don't take science advice from people who think an unborn baby is just a clump of cells or that global warming is the undisputed or global warming anthropogenic theory is the absolute uh, truth. I, I don't take science advice from people like that, but they actually believe with regard to the number of genders, unborn babies, climate science, that the science is on their side, don't they? Yeah, and you look at you know how many genders there are and and when you look at what gender theory is which is that gender is just this unknowable thing that you can make up based on your mood and you can change it by the hour um it's just kind of a personality label that you slap on yourself which means you know not only are there infinite genders but it means you the kids are encouraged to come up with their own gender because it's like when we were in high school you always wanted to be unique and special and everybody wanted to 
everybody wanted to stand out from the crowd and be their own person. And, and you know, all teenagers have always had that in, uh, that impulse, but now they're being encouraged to um, come up with the most special gender they can think of. You know, if you have your own gender and you're the only one, then you are the most uh, oppressed of the intersectional classes. <laughs> so it really goes back to intersectionality and, and neo-Marxism and cultural Marxism. Well, all I can say is is that I remember watching the movie, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, where the lead character was singing, don't, don't dream it, be it. And there is this liberal notion that, you know, there all these things like gender are just social constructs or human constructs, and that there really is no such thing as gender. There really is no such thing as biological sex. If you can, if you can dream it, you can be it. And whether that means that you're a cat, or whether you're a really ugly dude who thinks you're a beautiful woman, it doesn't matter. As long as you believe it, that's uh, that's what you are. So, uh, I mean, we're living in kind of a fantasy world, or at least the liberals are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, and that is what it all goes back to. It goes back to, you know, that this is, this is the root of all this was the Disney movies of the 1980s and 1990s that were telling us that all you have to do is follow your heart and believe in yourself. And, uh, you know, you can do anything you want. And that kind of existentialist message um, led us to where we are today. You know, you have this kind of extremist individualism where you define reality. And, uh, and, and we based our culture on that. We told our kids, yeah, be, be who you want to be, follow your dreams, follow your heart. And we didn't ground them in traditions and morals and, and religion and give them these foundations that no, there's an objective reality outside of yourself that you have to conform to. Instead, it was no, you define reality within yourself and everybody else has to bow the knee to your definition of reality. And that's how we found ourselves in this mess. I'm so glad that you brought up the Disney movies of the 80s and 90s because when the movie The Little Mermaid came out, uh, it was quickly pointed out that there's a scene in a church at the very beginning where the priest is uh, experiencing an erection. I don't know how I didn't notice it before, but when someone at work told me about it, I went back and looked and I was like, oh my God, they were right. And not only that, in the movie Little Mermaid, the character Ursula was modeled after the female impersonator, the drag queen, Divine. So this Disney-pushing gender bender stuff on little kids didn't start, you know, a few years ago when Ron DeSantis took them on. It's been going on for decades, which is really forcing me to ask myself, why in the hell would a company that relies on young families with young kids for business take a chance on alienating them by doing this, by, by mixing this gender bender stuff into what are supposed to be children's movies. I mean, what do you make? I mean, I know there are uh, a lot of pressures on large corporations to give into this stuff, but Disney was doing it before it was cool. So why do you think a children's company, if you will, was pushing this ideology on kids that many decades ago. I mean, we're talking, you know, in some cases, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, and th this is the slow um, capture of our of our institutions by the left. Um, and this has been their strategy for decades. They, you know, liberalism and progressivism can't build anything because they don't have any foundations. You know, wh why why is it conservatives and Christians who build giant cathedrals and and found companies like Walt Disney and found these massive corporations, you know, because they're the ones who believe that we are building this Western civilization for a better future. Progressives, you know, by way of contrast, their method is to take those institutions and infiltrate them and take them over from the inside. That's the only way they can build anything is by capturing things. I'm reminded of, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, where Sauron can't create any new uh, creatures himself. He has to twist elves into orcs and, and uh, ints into trolls. You know, he can't create, he can only corrupt. And that's what you see from the left. Um, you know, it's been a decades long plan to, you know, start to focus on the arts and entertainment. And they know that that's how you influence culture. So they're much more savvy, you know, when it comes to the culture war stuff. And we conservatives are too busy 
like going to our jobs and doing work <laughs> to notice that they're uh, that they've captured all of these all of these entertainment uh, uh, venues and yeah and as you you know as you pointed out in the it started a long time ago with things like Little Mermaid, you know, where ironically it's the villain that's based on a drag queen, but it was just kind of the slow, um, <laughs> the slow move in that direction to start to normalize those things. We have to take a quick break, but we will be right back after these messages. We all know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday at Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving we offer industrial grade supplies for every industry with same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders all backed by real people ready to help so you can get the right answers and products right when you need them call click Granger.com or just stop by Granger for the ones who get it done I have a, another question for you. It's very serious, and I'd like you to treat it as such. Kyle, why are there so many darn references to chickens in this book? I did a search. <laughs> I did a search, and the chickens were referenced 11 times. If Colonel Sanders wrote an autobiography, he wouldn't reference chickens that many times. I mean, you talk about General <laughs> So's chicken and putting chicken bones in a, and drawing a circle around it. Uh, you ask if chickens cry. You talk about chicken coops. Then, where there's a little bio on you and Joel and Brandon, Joel has a chicken on his head and a chicken down below him. Did Joel put the chicken stuff in this book? Yes. Yeah, you you answered your own question. Joel um, Joel owns like 20 chickens in his, <laughs> in his backyard in Ohio, so he's obsessed with them. And, uh <laughs> And he must have had chickens on the brain while he was uh, while he was writing those those portions. <laughs> well, tell tell Joel that he got to me. I mean, I was I was reading this thing and I did finish it, which I don't always get to do when I have a guest on the show. But your book, thankfully, had a lot of illustrations and that made it go quicker. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Liberals are going to love it. They don't have to read that much. But yeah, by the end of it, I was going. There's another damned chicken. I mean, I was just like going. What is the thing? And I wasn't going to ask, and then I said, I've just got to ask. When I saw the picture of the two chickens by Joel, I said, that does it. I'm, I'm asking the question. So thanks for explaining that. And I know you've probably just saved a lot of the people who are going to buy the book and read the book countless sleepless nights trying to figure Well, hopefully it. we've, you know, we've helped enlighten you to your chicken gender. <laughs> Not a chicken dinner, a chicken gender. Okay, I, yes, I get yes. it. Yeah, I, 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 oh, wait a minute. I have another question because... I hate to say this, even though this book is supposed to clarify gender, the more I read, the more confused I became about my own gender. So I have a question for you, and you said you did a lot of research prior to writing the book, so I'm hoping you can answer my question. If I became a male, I actually am a male, but if I became a male that identified as a lesbian, so I still only wanted to have sex with women, would I be gay? Uh, male, sex, women, lesbian. Yeah, so I'm identifying Yay. as a lesbian, but I'm only, but as a lesbian, I only want to have sex with women, which is what men are supposed to do anyway. So, is there anything wrong with that? No, I don't think so. I think you're, I think you're in the clear. All right. Well, gee, now I don't have to go to confession. Uh, let's see. You put a list in this book that I thought was really hysterical. It was uh, trigger warnings, and it said. Uh, uh, you know, these are things that would absolutely trigger liberals and we should avoid them at all costs. These are things we can't say. Men are not women. Women are not men. Men have XY chromosomes. Women have XX chromosomes. Men have a penis and women have a vagina. You are on very dangerous ground there, my friend. 
Uh, is it is it possible to believe men are not women while sim- simultaneously not wanting them to die? Trans people commit suicide at outsized rates regardless of their level of acceptance in society. Trans people are more accepted in today's society than either blacks in, during the antebellum South or Jews in Nazi Germany, yet they still have a higher suicide rate, rate than a, either group. Teachers should not talk about gay sex to children. Marriage is between one man and one woman, and gender and sex are inherently connected and are arguably two definitions of the same concept. You stand by all those things, uh, Kyle? Uh, I disavow. I disavow everything that was just said. Ah, well, uh, you're 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 sounding a little bit like Justice uh, <laughs> Justice Jackson. Yeah, I, there, but, yeah. You know. I'm not a I'm not a biologist, so I can't comment <laughs> on anything. Well, I'm not either, but I always thought I knew the difference between men and women. Uh, oh, by the way, I, and I hope you accept this in the spirit in which it is given. Um, I noticed your list on banned hymns. These are hymns that you absolutely cannot play without triggering a liberal. And one of them is She's Always a Woman by Billy Joel. Totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. Dude Looks Like a Lady by Aerosmith. Man, I Feel Like a Woman by Shania Twain. He's a Woman, She's a Man by the Scorpions. I don't know that one. A Boy and a Girl by Octavio Paz. I'm probably too old to know that one, too. But I want to point out that when when you do the second printing of this book, you've got to add three more. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. One of them is Game of Love by Wayne Fontana and the Mind Benders. That's the one that says the purpose of a man is to love a woman and the purpose of a woman is to love her man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to get Lola by the Kinks in there. I mean, I just, I, I, I think that needs to be part of it. And then finally, and this is a country one, and I know she had Shania Twain, so you weren't avoiding country. Uh, I think I'm dancing with a man by Rodney Carrington featuring carrot <laughs> featuring carrot top in the video as the woman who's actually a man. So, you know, I mean, we've known each other all of 20 minutes. Uh, I thought it wouldn't be too much to ask that you add those three. So <laughs> no, we, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yeah. We'll definitely add that in the, in the next printing. <laughs> Giving me full credit, of course. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. I, well, uh, boy, where did the 20 minutes go? I'll just ask you because I don't want to miss anything. Is there anything about this book that I haven't asked you about that you'd like to tell the listeners about? Well, the best thing about the book really, you know, like you were mentioning the graphics and the stick figures, easy to read for liberals, uh, not too many <laughs> words. Um, and the interactive features, you can generate your own gender, you can generate your own sexual orientation, you can generate pickup lines to help you pick up on uh, whatever gender you want. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're really doing a service to society here. And uh, by the end of the book, you'll be a changed uh, person. This is also a book that can keep people out of trouble because it talks about things not to say in the workplace. You know, and and we've all said things in the workplace that we wish we we had not said. I mean, uh, I think I was uh, in the workplace once and I made a reference to a Chinese fire drill in front of a Chinese person. <laughs> I went, oh, my God, did I just <laughs> say that? Uh, and and that, that was actually uh, pretty minor. But <sighs> I'm telling you, it just seems like the world's gone nuts, Kyle. I mean, we've got kindergartners being invaded by drag queens. You'll like this. I was arguing with an LGBTQIA, M-O-U-S-E person on Twitter and about drag queens in kindergarten classrooms. And they made me out to be the villain. They said, Mark, these kind, caring people want to donate their time to make sure children learn how to read, and you have a problem with it because you're, you're transphobic. And I said, okay, <laughs> first of all, the classroom already has a teacher who's being paid to teach the kids how to read. And secondly, that's not the only place they can volunteer Nursing homes look for people to read to the old people. How come we don't see drag queens showing up there? So is this, in your, in, in your opinion, a recruitment effort on the part of trans people to try to get kids to follow in their footsteps? Well, I mean, like I said, they can only capture institutions, right? They don't build their own institutions, and it's the same thing with the nuclear family. These, uh, these people aren't having their own kids, um, whether because it's biologically impossible in the, in the partnership that they've created 
or because they're just morally opposed to having kids based on climate change or whatever. So their strategy is to take our kids, you know, and that's, uh, that's always been what it is. It's this collectivist bent to, uh, you know, your kids are not your own and they need to be raised by the community and the public schools. Takes a village. Captured all of those institutions. Yep, exactly. It goes back to that. Takes a village. I mean, and I don't know how anyone could deny uh, anthropogenic global warming when you have world leading scientists like Greta Thunberg, Al Gore, Leonardo DiCaprio, Harrison Ford, all agreeing that this is a serious problem and that the world is eventually going to boil over. So, I mean, we don't really have any experts who can combat the expertise of those individuals. One last question, very, very important. Kyle, tell the people where they can get a copy of the book. Once again, it's called The Babylon Bee Guide to Gender, the Comprehensive Handbook to Men, Women, and Millions of New Genders We Just Made Up. <laughs> Where can they get the book? Yeah, anywhere books are sold, you know, it's on Amazon. It's on our own store at shop.babylonbee.com. So, uh, yeah, you can go, go grab it pretty much anywhere. It's probably not featured on Target's Pride Collection, however. Oh, no. Well, an oversight on their part. Kyle, I want to thank you again for being on the show. I love what you guys do. You've got other books out there, you know, the the uh, Babylon Bee Guide to Wokeness, the Babylon Guide to Being a Perfect Christian, and now the Babylon uh, Bee Guide to Gender. Feel free to come back on the show whenever you'd like to talk about any of those. And once again, tell tell Joe he's got some splaining to do. I want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. I want to thank everybody for being with us today, and I want to remind you that if you'd like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can text the word T, that's T-E-A, to 44144. That's T, T-E-A, as in text enough already, to 44144. Also, I want to remind you that Christmas is going to be here before you know it, and if you go to TeaPartyPowerHour.com, click on the Trump Coin tab, you will see a wonderful collection of silver Trump coins. These coins are 99.9% .9 silver and make an excellent gift for the Trump supporter on your Christmas list. And that's it for today. I do want to ask you to join us next time when my guest will be Stacy Manning, who is the co-author of a book entitled How to Raise Conservative Kids in a Woke City. You won't want to miss that one. Thanks again for being here. You've been listening to the Tea Party Power Hour with Mark Gillar. We all know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday monetizing digital services since 2004 boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone awg where innovation meets monetization